Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back. Again, you're here with Minister Crystal Fortier. TV here on YouTube and you know, I give God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And once again, I've had issues and have to retape this again. So anyways, I'm just going to go on through it and uh, just give God the glory. Uh, praise God, today is Sunday, April 1st. And I am, I am so elated to be here with you once again. Welcome back to those who of you who are coming back to my channel. And welcome to you who have not ever been here before. I thank you and I praise God for your presence. I thank God that people are paying attention, that they want more of the of the word and they want to keep God's word, you know? They want to do right. They want to walk in righteousness and such. Uh, today represented a day that the world calls Easter, but it's a day that God did not design for us to uh, to practice. To 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 he didn't say to keep Easter holy. But he said to keep the Passover holy, keep unleavened bread, first fruits, uh, Pentecost is my menorah again, um, uh, Yom, uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Uh, this first candlestick here represents uh, 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 Passover. He said to remember my death until I come. And then in the Old Testament, he talks about Passover upside down, all around, inside out. Y'all need to know. Um, God talked about his seven feast days and they're not Jewish feast days they're God's feast days uh, we have been bamboozled into thinking that they are Jewish but it was the Hebrews who adopted it because Abraham was Hebrew and so they became the Jewish religion or the Jewish culture and so the Jewish culture adopted it well if we've been grafted in into the Jewish uh, culture then we also should be following uh, the ordinances that were set forth by the Most High God and so we're gonna get into that today but today they call it Easter but today actually um, Passover came a couple of days ago on Nisan 14 uh, also here that's on the Hebrew calendar and on the Gregorian calendar they called it um, it was uh, Easter, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, they called it, uh, oh my gosh, well we call it Passover, that's the day he died. I don't even know what they call it in the world, uh, in, uh, they don't call it anything, Good Friday, that's what they call it, they call it Good Friday. There's nothing good about Friday, okay, um, it's pagan, it was, it was invented by the Roman Catholic Church, and so God said to keep my feast and keep it holy. I'm going to go through something real quick with you. If uh, uh, when Jesus rode into the Jerusalem on a donkey, it was on a Sabbath. It was on a Saturday. And so if you take Saturday, because he said that on the 14th day, you're going to take the lamb and you're going to kill it. So you're going to gather, you're going to, Jesus brought himself into the land on the 14th day. So I'm trying to compare Old and New Testament. Old Testament concealed, New Testament reveals. Jesus came in the donkey on the 10th day. He said In the Old Testament, he said to get the lamb on the 10th day and keep it until the 14th day. Okay, if you go to uh, Esther chapter 3, verse 7, you'll see the first day of the month is Nisan. And the last, I'm sorry, not day, but the month. The, last, the first month of the year technically is Nisan, and the last technically is Adar. And so... God told uh, uh, the children of Israel to get the unspotted, unspotted lamb of the first year um, in the first month, which is Nisan. If you go to Esther, this, oh God, Esther chapter 3, verse 7, you will see that uh, God, uh, uh, the first month is Nisan and the last month is Adar. And so um, he told them to get the, go get the unspotted lamb of the first year um, in the month of Nisan. And so Jesus rode into the into the uh, Jerusalem on a donkey on the day they call Palm Sunday, but it wasn't on a Sunday it, because there would be no one in the temple on a Sunday. But he did it on a Sabbath. He did it on a Sabbath. And it had, would have to be on a Sabbath because he only would have done it on a Sabbath. They would only have been in the temple buying and selling and exchanging uh, money and such um, on a Sabbath. Um, there would be no one in the temple on a Sunday, it just wouldn't have happened. And so Jesus rode in on a Sunday, and on a Saturday, I'm sorry. 
And so if we count four days, God told them to keep the lamb, the unspotted lamb of the first year, for four days. So four days after Saturday, count with me, okay? So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So he said, keep it until the 14th day. So the 10th day it rolled in, on the 14th day they killed it. So that's telling us right there that Jesus rolled into Jerusalem to, to present himself as this unspotted lamb on the 10th of Nisan. And then on the 14th of Nisan, he was, he was killed. He went on the cross and he died. And this was represents Passover. He became the unspotted lamb of the first year on Passover. Okay, which this past Friday, today is April 1st, so this past Friday would have been the 30th of March on the Gregorian calendar, but it represents Nisan 14, okay, on the regular calendar, um, on the Hebrew calendar, I'm sorry. And then Nisan 15 is, co is considered unleavened bread. That's the day he was buried. Nisan 18 would be the day that he rose from the grave which is called first fruits. 50 days after Passover, we get Pentecost. Pentecost, okay? Pentecost represents the day that the Holy Ghost, he promised us the Holy Ghost, and 50 days later, the Holy Ghost came upon the 120 Jews in the upper room. <laughs> That's the same day in the Old Testament that Moses received the law. 3,000 souls were died when Moses received the law because they were down on below worshiping the idol. 3,000 people lost their lives. Now, I think it was uh, 2,000 years later. More than 2,000. 4,000 years later, I think. 4,000 years later, when we got the Holy Spirit, 3,000 people were saved. <laughs> God is amazing amazing hallelujah Jesus so we have the four uh, what God rep that represent the uh, spring feast Passover, unleavened bread first fruits, Pentecost and then you have the three fall feast Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur and uh, Sukkot the rapture of the church uh, the day of atonement and tabernacles where we tabernacle with the Lord for a thousand years. So awesome, isn't it? I love it. Ah! Anyways, um, yeah. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to bring the un engrafted word of God to your people, Father. Thank you for your grace and benevolence. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive all of us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is anything that's not like you, remove it, Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your benevolence, Father. Lord, you said in 1 John 1, 9, if we ask for forgiveness, that you will be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. So we love you. We adore you. We adore you, Lord. We do adore this word. And thank you for being engrafted into my life, into my heart, Father. Thank you for the desire to want to do this. I praise you, Lord, in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe. So hit the little red subscription button and give me a thumbs up, like the video, and then you can share it. Share it with someone. This, everybody needs to know about this. This is awesome. This is the truth. This is some of the truth that hasn't been taught, and when they teach it, it's, it's skimmed over. For some reason, they don't stick to it. They, people are not sticking to well, I'm not going to just say people, I'm going to say bishops, pastors, preachers, evangelists, teachers, y'all. You need, you need to teach the truth. Teach the truth of the word of God. It's not a Jew thing. It's not a Hebrew thing. It's a God thing. God told us to keep his feast days. He's a God's feast days. They're not Jewish feast days. They're God's feast days. And if we're engrafted into the Jewish culture, which are our roots, okay, Jesus was Jewish. And Jesus practiced God's feast days. He kept them holy forever. The Bible says keep them as an ordinance forever. That means forever. So let's move on. I'm going to begin the Exodus chapter 12 is what we're going to do today. We're going to do 12 through 15. Exodus chapter 12 through 15. We're going to get this word in. We're going to learn. We're going to I'm going to do my very best to help you to understand God's 
feast days to keep them holy. He said to keep them holy as a holy moed, a holy convocation forever. Okay? He said, remember my death until I come. He didn't say remember uh, Easter. Easter is not nowhere in the Old Testament. But it's all throughout the Old Testament and all throughout the New Testament. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, feast, which is a feast of weeks. Feast, the feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of uh, first fruits, the feast of weeks or Pentecost, the feast of, of uh, Rosh Hashanah, the feast of Yom Kippur, and the feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot. We need to be learning this. We need to be teaching this to our children, not how to go to the the the. The, uh, the forest and cut down a tree where Jeremiah chapter 10 verse uh, 7 I want to think so 10 verse 7 or 10 verse 3 and Jeremiah tells us don't cut down that tree and don't decorate it with gold and silver and, 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 uh, and uh, nail it to the ground don't do it it's an idol and anything that's been sacrificed unto idols is sin don't do it don't celebrate Christmas don't celebrate Easter don't celebrate St. Valentine's Day. Don't celebrate St. Uh, whatever day. St. Uh, what's the other one? The St. Day. Um, the green one. I can't think of it right now. You know what I'm talking about. Don't do it. It's pagan. It's been sacrificed to idols. I'm going to show you what God told us to do right now. Come with me. Read with me. Have you Get your Bible out. Don't watch me. Get your Bible out. And let's read this engrafted word. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Last time we talked about Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. God was talking to Moses. He made Pharaoh's heart harden on purpose. He hardened Pharaoh's heart on purpose because God was trying to make it to make sure that Moses and the rest of the children of Israel made it to the the um, Passover celebration. It was time for Passover. It was time for Passover. Abraham uh, practiced Passover. Isaac and Jacob our forefathers and now it was time for Moses to practice the Passover to continue on the holy moed the holy convocation the coming together the Passover it was time for Passover and God was showing Moses okay I'm going I'm gonna make sure I harden Pharaoh's heart for such a time as this because I'm, I'm buying time because it's not time yet just like Jesus couldn't go to the cross after Peter not uh, uh, cut the, the ear off of the soldier. God, Jesus had to go, oh, no, don't kill us. Hold on, let me get the ear, put the ear back on because his time had not come. It had not come for him to die just yet. So God promised he would harden the heart of Pharaoh and he did so. He did so. And in the meantime, he's setting us up to help us to understand the Passover. Excuse me, one second. Let me wet my lips. And so God is helping us to understand his Passover, his feast days. Celebrate my feast days forever. Amen. And so here we go. Get your Bibles out. We're going to Exodus chapter 12, and I'm going to start reading. Come on and read along with me. It says, and the Lord spake to me, and I'm reading in the, New T the King James Version. Sometimes I will do some um, explanation of, of what I know and then also what I have here in the living. Um, but in, uh, for 100%, well, at least 90%, 95% of the time, we are in the King James Version. Okay? Always the King James Version. Because we know that the errors are not there. Amen? The original. It says, verse 12, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, I want to go, you to go to Esther. Go to Esther real quick. I just need to show you real quick in the book of Esther. Esther is before, uh, I think it's Psalms. Um, Esther chapter 7. Yeah, uh, uh, Psalms. It's Esther, Job, and then Psalms. So Esther chapter 3 verse 7 says, and I quote the King James Version, it says uh, Esther chapter 3 verse 7 is, is in the first month. God is telling us, God, read your Bible, study your word. 
God is telling us right here, it says, in the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Asherus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Hammon, from day to day and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is the month Adar. So we know that God gave us Nisan and Adar. Nisan, the first month of the year, and Adar being the last. We also know that there are all, all obviously months in between that. And so um, if you're studying your word, you will know the months that are in between. Now, um, the word of God all throughout the Old Testament are going to, is going to be showing us the, uh, the rest of God's feast days. Okay, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the feast days, yes, and also the days of the month. Um, the, the first month, I'm sorry, not the days of the month, but because God's days of the month were first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. And then first day, second day, first, that's how they weren't named Monday through Friday. That's pagan. <laughs> so God's uh, uh, months of the year is Nisan, it's the first month, then Ayir, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elul, Tishri, Hashvan, Keslev, Tevet, Shevet, Adar. Adar is the 12th month and the sun is the first month. So all throughout scripture, um, God is showing us the days of the original calendar month, the Hebrew calendar. And so if you go to Esther chapter 3 verse 7, I just showed you the first month is Nisan and the last month is Adar. So here we're talking about Nisan. It says, uh, verse 3, it says, Speaking to all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, what month is that? Nisan, right? They shall take to them a man, a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the son of the souls every man according to his eating shall make you count for a lamb so depending on the size of the household right uh, a male of the first year so verse 5 a lamb shall be without blemish this and here's a metaphor for Jesus keep this in mind it's always talking about metaphors it's real to them at the time but it's also real for us today and it's metaphoric and it's truth and so it's talking about Jesus and ye shall keep it okay hold on back to five it says and the lamb the, the verse of grace but number five and the lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year okay ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats and you shall keep it until the 14th day so here is the 14th day so when you take it out it's the 10th day 10th rep 10 represents completion and so the 10th plague is about to come come uh, uh, over uh, uh, the, the children of Israel the, uh, the I'm sorry the, the Egyptians the 10th plague and also in the 10th month I'm sorry not the 10th month Lord have mercy the first month, the tenth day of the month, it says on the tenth day of this month, in verse 3, the tenth day shall you take it to every man a lamb. So Jesus rode into, like I said earlier, he rode into Jerusalem on the tenth day. Oh, I wanted to go back and count, so we never did finish counting, huh? So on the tenth day was the Sabbath, so, so it was Saturday. So 11th day was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's four days. So the 10th day was Saturday. And then the 11th day was Sunday. The 12th day was Monday. The 13th day was Tuesday. And the 14th day was Wednesday. So we know that Jesus died on a Wednesday, the 14th day. And I'm going to show you here in verse 6. So on the 10th day, you go get the lamb without blemish on the 10th day. Okay, um, verse 6 is, And ye shall keep it until the what day? The 14th day of the same month. What month is that? Nisan, right? And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Well, we know that Jesus died on the ninth hour. It was the evening of um, Passover. Um, their day starts at sundown. The first hour is 7 p.m. 
Jesus went to the cross on the third hour, which was 9 p.m. And he died at 3 a.m. Okay? He died at 3 a.m. Well, it would have been 3 a.m. our time. But technically, technically, um, Wow, it's hard to describe. Um, time is totally different because 7 p.m. is the first hour. Uh, the third hour is 9 p.m., but that's the third hour of their day. So God's days start from evening to morning. If you go back to uh, Genesis, you'll see that after the first day was evening to morning. And after the second day was evening to morning. So time was different here. You have to understand time... You have to understand the the dates. There was only 360 days in the calendar, not 365. That was added later. And the Sabbath always landed on a Sabbath, Saturday. The feast days always landed on a Sabbath. God designed it that way. This Bible is could be very simple. If man had not tampered with it. But if you study to show thyself approved. God will show you these little nuggets. So Jesus died on the 14th of Nisan. So if he died on a Wednesday. He was buried. He died. On a Wednesday. He was buried on a Thursday. So if you count three days from Thursday. Then you can get tomorrow after the Sabbath. The Bible says the morrow after the Sabbath. Is when he rose. From the grave. Now, the morrow after the Sabbath was a Sunday, but you take you can't take Friday and get three days out of that. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's not ethical. So he died on a Wednesday. He was buried on a Thursday, and three days later he rose. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which was the 18th of Nisan. Now let me go on. A whole lot more. And verse 7 it says, And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts of the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. Jesus became our unleavened bread. So this is the feast of unleavened bread. He died. Okay. So they're going to eat the unleavened bread. He became our unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. So basically, it's the Passover Seder plate has six different uh, departments on it, and the bitter herb, the unleavened bread, the um, the, the the shank, the the meat, the uh, the bone of the of a lamb or the shank is part of that feast, and God is designing it right here in front of our eyes. He's telling us exactly what should be on the Seder plate. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herb they shall eat it. Eat not it of it raw, nor sodden at all with water. That means don't, don't boil it. But roast it with fire, his head and his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. It says, uh, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remains of it in the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And your staff in your hand. What's your staff? The word of God. Hallelujah. And uh, which is your sword. Ye shall eat it in haste, and it is the Lord's Passover. And he's saying you shall do it quickly. Um, I'm going to read it in the living so that we can un get an understanding on 10 and 11. It says, um, it says, don't eat any of it the next day if, if, if all is not eaten that night. Burn it. Burn what's left. Eat it with your traveling clothes on. Like, be ready to go. Prepare for a long journey wearing your walking shoes and carrying your walking stick in your hands. Eat it in a hurry. This, this observance shall be called the Lord's Passover. So, and I'm going to keep reading so you can see exactly that God designed it for even for us today. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night 
It says, for I will pass through. It doesn't say the death angel will pass through. It says I. So God is speaking here. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against the, all the small g gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Hallelujah. Like the blood is a token for us today. It's called Passover. Hallelujah. Ah, it's a token for us today. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a what? A memorial. And ye shall keep it. You shall keep it. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. I didn't write it. It's in verse 14. That represents Jesus. Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. It says, and this day, it's talking about Passover. Okay? It's talking about all of God's feast days. Ye shall keep it as an ordinance. Ye shall keep it for a memorial. And ye shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And I'm going to show you later on, I think it's in Exodus chapter 13 or 14 or maybe even 15, where he talks about the sojourner or the, the stranger, which represents the Gentile. Those of us who have adopted Jesus as our Lord and Savior because of we have become the children of God. We're not just the children of Israel. There, there are the children, but we're the children of God. And we have to celebrate what God tells us to celebrate. Jesus celebrated every one of these feast days when he was on this earth. He, he fulfilled the first four. Just like Isaiah chapter 53 said he would. He became the first four feast days. He became our Passover. He became our unleavened bread. He became our first fruits when he raised from the dead. See, it's not called Easter. It's called first fruits. Let's not get it twisted. Easter is not delegated in this Bible to be celebrated at all. God told us to keep his feast days as a memorial, as an ordinance to be kept forever. And then he gave us Pentecost. When is Pentecost? That's when the Holy Ghost came on the 120 Jews who were in the upper room keep his feast days teach them to our children so they can teach it to their children I'm going to go on because I got a lot to do seven days shall be eaten, eat unleavened bread even the first day ye shall put away leaven put away sin leaven represents sin take it out of your house and every little morsel of it shall be gone out of your houses you shall get rid of it. Get rid of the leaven. Get rid of sin. Leaven represents sin. Leaven rep is, is, is yeast that's put into bed, bread that makes it rise. It's like pride that makes man prideful. It's yeast. It's sin. Get rid of it. It represents sin. It says, uh, uh, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whoever eats the leavened bread... From the houses from the first day until the seventh day, the soul shall be cut off from Israel. And the first day, <clears throat> there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No matter of work shall be done in them, save except that which every man must eat. Because we have to cook and, or fix something to eat. That only may be done of you. That's all you can do is fix yourself something to eat. And ye shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Hallelujah. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the second one here. That's the day that Jesus died. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. This is the day that he was buried. Passover is the day he died. Unleavened Bread is the day he was there. The reason that you see these candles have been burnt is because I burnt one on, cap, on Passover and I burnt the other one on Unleavened Bread to represent his death and his burial. Unleavened Bread. Passover. Unleavened bread. Amen. 
So he says, and ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day for your generations by an ordinance forever. So that's two of them. He told us to keep it as an ordinance forever. He told us to keep it as an ordinance forever. Passover, unleavened bread. It says in the first month, first month is what? Nisan. On the 14th day, here it is, the 14th day of the month, ye sh at even or evening in the evening shall ye eat unleavened bread. Oh, hallelujah. Until the 1 and 20th day, the 21st day of the month, in the evening. Seven days, it says, shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Get rid of the leaven. Get rid of the sin. For whoever eats that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger, hallelujah, there it is. I told you I said it was later on, but it's right here. It's right here. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land. So some people want to say, no, that's for the Jews. That's for the, not for the Gentiles. That's for the Jews. No, right here it says it's for the stranger. I'm going to read it to you. It says it right here. It says, seven days shall there be no leaven found in the houses. Whoever eats that which is leaven, even that so shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land. We are the strangers. We are the sojourners. We're the ones who have, have adopted the Jewish culture because Jesus was Jewish. Hello? Even in the New Testament, he practiced God's feast days. These are not Jewish feast days. <coughs> These are God's feast days. We're the strangers. Ye shall eat nothing leaven, and all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Ye shall eat unleavened bread, not leavened bread. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Does that sound familiar? Kill the Passover. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm really dry. Verse 22, and ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that <clears throat> is in the basin and strike the lintel, strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of the house until the morning. Now you're going to take it, you're going to put it on the lintel, the top, and you're going to put it on the door post. Okay. <laughs> which in a way represents the cross. <clears throat> and you will not leave your house until the morning. You will paint the blood and you will go inside and lock yourself in. These are the orders given to Moses to give to the children of Israel by God, the Most High God. Okay? Verse 23, for the Lord who will pass by, I, I always stop right there. And I'm always at all when I read that. Because here it says, for the Lord, the capital L-O-R-D, capital L, capital R, capital D, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. It doesn't say any death angel. I hear a lot of people say, oh, the death angel came by and smote the, smote the Egyptian, the firstborn of the Egyptian's children. No. Mm -mm. The Bible says the Lord not a death angel. He passed through and smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two sides, the Lord will pass over, hallelujah, the door. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto the houses to smite you. Mm -mm. Okay, I guess that will be the death angel, the destroyer. Let me read that in the living... And Jehovah will pass through the land and kill the Egyptians. It says it. It says God will do it. But when he sees the blood upon the panel at the top of the door and on the two sides, he will pass over. That house will not permit the destroyer to enter and kill your firstborn. So, yeah, there is a destroyer out there. 
but God is passing by and allowing that destroyer to say, God is going, I guess the destroyer is going with God. And God's saying, okay, go ahead and get that one, get that one, get that one, get that one. Don't get that one, don't get that one, because it has the blood on the doorpost and the lentil. Amen? That's what it says. Hallelujah. 24, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and thy sons for however. Once again, it says forever. Okay, forever is forever. Jesus didn't, dis, didn't get rid of any of these feast days. He said keep them forever. I was underlining. I'm marking my Bible up, which is what you should be doing as well. Mm -hmm. 25, and it shall come to pass when ye become to the land which the Lord will give you, according to as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. Keep it. And ye shall come to pass when your children will say unto you, what does it mean? What mean ye by this service? So we're supposed to be teaching this to our children, not how to go gather Easter eggs and bunny rabbits and Easter baskets. I saw people on the streets today as I'm driving and with all these big Easter baskets. What does this mean? Buying and selling for, the, for God's people. That's sin. Wow. So it says, when your children ask you, let them know that ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped they saw that God delivered and the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron so did they and it came to pass that at midnight God waited till midnight mm -hmm. he waited till midnight he waited at midnight uh -huh. and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne. He promised he would do that. He told them earlier. He told them in earlier chapters here in the book of Exodus that I am going to kill the firstborn of Egypt. I'm going to, the ones that sit on the throne, the firstborn that are captive the, in the dungeon, and the firstborn of the cattle. I'm going to kill them all. And here it is, prophecy being fulfilled. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of captive of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead in Egypt, not in Israel, where the blood was. They were smart enough to get the blood on the post. 31, and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone and bless me and bless me also. <laughs> like give me a blessing as you go. Don't leave me like this. <laughs> And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. We're all good as dead, the Egyptians were saying. It says, the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. So before they can add leaven to the bread, that's another reason why they use unleavened bread because before they can even add leaven to their bread and make bread with their breading troughs, they had to grab that bread and get out of Egypt because Pharaoh wasn't playing. He said, go now, get out. You just killed my firstborn and all of Egypt's firstborn. You got to go. And so they, they grab, and that's why unleavened bread was so significant, because it never had a chance to rise, because they never had a chance to put the um, leaven in it, okay? Um, 
It says the children of Israel did according to the word of the Lord. And God said this early in early scriptures too. So this is being fulfilled according to the word of, of not the Lord, the, of Moses, that they borrow of the Egyptians jewels of silver and, and jewels of gold and raiment. God, that God has a purpose for this. And the Lord gave the pe people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required. Whatever they asked for, they gave them because they wanted them out of their country. And they spoiled the Egyptian. That means they stripped them everything they owned. And the children of Israel sojourned from Ramses of Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. So we're talking about over 600,000 uh, people, uh, men, but also children, men, women and children too. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds, even much cattle. So you, a, mix, mix, a mixed multitude uh, represents a various sorts of people. People of various sorts went with them. So we're not just talking about children of Israel. We're talking about Egyptians that fled with them too. That saw the God of Israel that, that, that knew that he was real. And the mixed multitude, the Bible says it, I didn't say it, chapter 38, it says a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds, even every much, every, uh, even every much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, uh, neither had time to prepare for themselves any victuals. They didn't have time to bring food and cook it and bring it in. They had to go right now. It says, now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt, the sojourning of the children, um, was 430 years. That means they sojourned. The children of Israel lived in Egypt for 430 years. The Bible says it. I didn't say it. Verse 40, and it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went up out of the land of Egypt. And it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. That this is that night that of the Lord to be observed uh, of all the children of Israel. And their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is an ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. This is an ordin ordinance of the Passover. Sorry, my ink pen stopped. Whatever, stop working. Um, in the in the living, it says uh, it says here it says uh, then uh, Je Je uh, Jehovah said to Moses and Aaron, These are the rules concerning the observance of the Passover. Um, it's, tell, it's saying that foreigners cannot eat, shall not eat the lamb, um, but any slave who has been purchased may eat it if he has been circumcised. So um, um, uh, no foreigner shall eat it because most foreigners have not been circumcised. And circumcision is also is a, a cutting away of the flesh. And which means uh, surrendering your life to Christ, uh, cutting away sin out of your life. Hallelujah. I remember it's a metaphor for the most part. It's always a metaphor. It's all throughout this Bible. Um, a hired servant or visiting foreigner may not eat of it. You shall, all of you who eat each lamb, eat it together in one house and cannot and not carry it outside, and you shall not break any of its bones. And so this represents Jesus. So we know the lamb that they're talking about, because the Bible says that you shall not break his bones. It's talking about Jesus. He said he will not have a, I think it's in the book of Isaiah, where he will die, he will be scourged, but his bones will not be broken. And so this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. It says, but every man's servant that is brought from for money, who has circumcised him, uh, uh, then shall he eat thereof. After he has been circumcised, a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. It says, In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth uh, uh, the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. We know that Jesus never had a bone broken. So here we are again talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's setting us up 
so that we can understand what is going to happen when Jesus comes. Jesus also celebrated Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Jesus celebrated these seven feast days, God's feast days, and he fulfilled the first four and became our Passover, our unleavened bread, our first fruit, and then he promised us the Holy Ghost in Pentecost, and he fulfilled them. Okay, and it says, um, it says, and when a stranger said he should not break his bones, verse 48, it says, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all the males be circumcised. You hear me? We are the strangers. So we have to circumcise our hearts too. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. He's talking about the, the Christians. Come on now. We come later. But he's telling us that we're coming. Here it is. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Well, before you take Passover, before you take of the uh, bread, the uh, when you do communion, Holy Communion, we always the Bible says that examine yourself first. Uh, ask God to forgive you of your sins first before you partake, because if not, you're bringing damnation upon yourself. And some sleep, which means some die. Some get sick, and some die, because you're taking communion and Holy. Uh, a Passover communion with a dirty heart, with an uncircumcised heart. So examine yourself. Circumcise your heart before you partake. And that's what God is telling us. It says, One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourn among you. One law. So one rule for everyone. Think, people. Here we go. Thus did all the children of Israel. As the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt and their armies. Let's go to uh, chapter 13. It says, And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whoever come, opens the womb among the children of Israel, both man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day... Uh, this day came ye out of the month of Abib. Now, Abib and Nisan are the same, but it's a leap year. When you have Abib and Nisan together, there's a leap year. And I believe somebody was telling me in a video earlier, as I, one of my videos, I commented on somebody's video, and they were saying that uh, this year is a leap year. So Abib Nisan um, is occurring this year. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and, the, and of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey that thou shalt keep this service in this month. He's still telling us to do it. Unleavened bread. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And in the seventh day shall be a feast unto the Lord. God is so awesome. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Get rid of it. Get rid of your sin, people. Verse 8, And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came from forth out of Egypt and it shall be for a sign unto thee unto thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth for with a strong hand has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year forever verse 11 and it shall be with when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart unto thee the Lord all that opens the matrix, or uh, the womb, and every firstling 
that comes of the beast which thou hast. Males shall be the Lord's. Okay? And every firstling of an ass, and thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn, including, you know, Jesus was the firstborn, man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asks thee in time to come, saying, what does this mean? Here it is again. What does this mean? That thou shalt say unto him, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. So again, we need to be teaching our children. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would harden, hardly let us go that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, first, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opens the matrix, being male. So sacrifice unto the Lord your children um, as, a, uh, as a dedication, which we should be doing with all of our children. Um being males and it says but all the firstborn of my children I redeem and it shall be for a token unto thine hand um, and for frontals between thine eyes for by strength of, the, of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the Philistines so God did not take them through the way of the Philistines although that was near it was, the, it was the easiest way for them to get out of the land of Egypt to go through the land of the Philistines. But God said, no, I'm not taking you that way. I got another miracle I need to do for you. So just hold on and you'll see it in a minute. But I'm not taking you that way. He said, why? Because although it's near, for God said, let's preadventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. So he's saying if we go through the land of the Philistines, the Philistines are going to create havoc and war and the children of Israel are going to end up running back to Egypt where they feel safe. So no, I'm not going that way. He got another plan for them. It says, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, <laughs> which didn't make sense to people. But God does not make a whole lot of sense to us anyway. You just have to trust him. Right? And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. They were ready. Um, let me see if I can read it in the living. Well, it's okay. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Why? Because Joseph had asked him to do that. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. He let the children of Israel know, look, you're going through it. I know you're going through it, but check it out. God, will, God is going to show up. Don't despair. Don't fret. God is going to show up. So surely he will, that he's going to visit you. And ye shall carry up my bones out of... So take my bones with you when you leave. Is what he asked them. And they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in Etham. In the edge of the wilderness. Okay. Um, verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. So God... And if you can imagine clouds in the sky, if it's if it's cloudy like it's going to rain, it was that kind of cloud. There were 600,000 of them or more because it was just 600,000 men, but that didn't include children and women. So there, if you imagine all of these thousands of people that were leaving Egypt, probably millions, a couple million of people that were leaving Egypt, um, and this pillar of cloud had to be huge for all of these people. So he led them out with a pillar of cloud and led them by the way and by night a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. That is amazing. And it always amazes me when I think about even the fire by night because at night it was cold. The desert is cold at night. And so the, if it was a pillar of fire by night, and not only did it light their way, but it kept them warm. It kept them secure. And God just kept them. Chapter 14, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pi-Hetheroth, uh, 
between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Siphon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. So God is kind of setting it up, making it look like they're being, um, um, they're, they're in a place where they're, they're, uh, they're uh, blocked in and they can't get out. So I'm doing this so it'll appear to Pharaoh like we can't get out. <laughs> God is awesome. He's always up to stuff. It's, he's just awesome. It's just, un, it's just crazy. It's just, it's just. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna read it in the living. It says, "For Pharaoh will think those Israelites are trapped now between the desert and the sea." See, verse four. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored unto Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So he's saying here that uh, God is saying here that, and I'm going to on purpose harden Pharaoh's heart so he'll come running after you. <laughs> and then I made it seem like you're stuck. You're trapped. But God has another plan, right? Verse 5, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Huh. He made a he and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. He took all of the his best men and his best chariots and whatnot. Verse 8, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, just like he said he would, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. I'm going to read that in the living. He pursued the people of Israel, for they had taken much of the wealth of Egypt with them. Well, they're the ones who allowed Egypt to have the wealth in the first place. They were the servants. Verse 9, And the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, beside Pi Hitheroth, before Baal Zithron. Verse 10, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. <laughs> and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dwelt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Why, did, why have you done this? Because they think they're going to be captured by the, by the Egyptians. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Fear ye not. Stand still, be quiet, and see the salvation of the Lord. I love that. Ooh, Jesus, we need to do this more often. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more ever. <laughs> The Lord will fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord will, is the, here he becomes Jehovah Nisi. The Lord of hosts will fight your battle. Jehovah Shavuot, Shavuot the Lord of hosts, uh, uh, and the Lord Jehovah Nisi will hold a banner of, over you and fight your battle. Come on, he's telling them, Jehovah God is the God Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Shavuot, Shaviot, I think it's Shavuot, the Lord of hosts. And it says, and the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Why are you crying? Speak it to the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. Wow, this is so beautiful. 
Uh-huh. Tell them what to do. Stretch out that hand so you can divide it. Uh-huh. Stretch out that right. Stretch out that hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor unto Pharaoh. I'm going to get my, <laughs> Jesus, God is saying, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get, uh, I always say that uh, the, uh, God is going to get his glory. And that's what he's saying. I'm going to get my glory. He said it right here. He said, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor. Upon Pharaoh, I'm going to get my glory from this situation. And upon all of his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. I'm going to get my glory. And y'all going to see the glory of the Lord happening today. And Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor, God is saying, I'm going to, be, I'm going to get honor upon Pharaoh, and upon the chariots, and upon the horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp, I love this part. When he went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. So that the pillar of cloud that was before them continuously decided to go behind them. So you got this cloud behind you. You know how you have a fog outside and you can't see a foot in front of your face. So instead of going ahead on top of them and ahead of them, he went behind them. And look at what God says. That, that it went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israelites. So they, they, they couldn't see nothing. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. <laughs> the, the children of Israel were right in front of them. But they couldn't see because God put this cloud between them. But it gave light by night to these. So that one came not near the other all night. They didn't know the children of Israel were there all the time. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by the strong east wind. He always uses it from the east. This is just so amazing. All that night, and made the dry land and the waters were divided. He made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea even all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and all the horsemen and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels <laughs> I love this part and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Come on, you guys, let's go back. Because God is fighting for them, not for us. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come upon the Egyptians, <coughs> upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. Excuse me. So God told Moses to stretch out his hand with the rod and close up the waters on the Egyptians. 27. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. And when the morning appeared, uh, and the Egyptians fled against it, they tried to run out against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of, of Pharaoh. And it came to pass um, that, uh, let me see, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, and there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel, excuse me, that day 
of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed God and his servant Moses. And then and we're going to go into the last chapter that we're going to read today. Chapter 15 is a song that um, Miriam sang and the rest of the children of Israel were singing because God delivered them. Amen. It says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts has he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as in heap. And the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covereth them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in the, thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast girded them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take heed on this inhabitants of Philistinia, Philistina, then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone. They sh till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hand hath established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever, for the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Marion, the prophetess, uh, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel, which is the tambourine, in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels or tambourines and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Merah, or bitter, they could not drink the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Merah. And the people murmured against Moses, started murmuring already, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. So whenever we cry unto the Lord, you know God will hear the prayers of the righteous every single time. He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made 
for them a statute and on and an ordinance and there he proved them okay and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee so he became their Jehovah Rapha God who healed which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee he is your Jehovah Rapha he's making promises and they came to Elam where were twelve wells of water and three score or sixty one score is twenty so three score is sixty and ten palm trees okay um, three score and ten is sixty because uh, yeah and they encamp there by the waters amen wow um, Oh, three scores kids. So three score, one score is twenty, and ten is seventy. So there was seven. There's a number seven again. There were seven palm trees. So it says three score and ten palm trees. That's seventy, and they encamped there by the water. So God gave them the palm trees to keep them cool, and gave them the sweet water. He healed them. Told them, look, if you just will, if you will, will diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Do that which is right in the sight of the Lord and will give ear, listen to his commandments and keep his statutes. What are his statutes? Keep his feast days. These are God's feast days, not man's, not Jews, but God's and ours to keep forever. Get rid of the sin. Get rid of the trees. Get rid of the Easter bunnies. Get rid of Easter and celebrate God's feast days like he designed it. Right? Keep my statutes and my ordinances, God says. Then, he said, know that I am the God who heals thee. And they came to Elam, and were there twelve wells of water. He gave them twelve wells. Look, at twelve. Uh, there were twelve disciples, and there were twelve of the, uh, of the uh, um, children of Israel, twelve tribes of Israel. There's that number tribe, government. He's already starting to form a government and help them understand numbers and help them understand how he is in control uh, uh, the tenth plague was the the last plague that completed the time of Passover okay um, and then also it's the three four and ten palm trees and they encamped there by the waters God is awesome God takes care of those he loves those who love him enough to keep his commandments to live righteously, to live holy, and to give him his first fruits. Give him his first fruits. Seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added. Know ye that, that he is God. He made us, not we ourselves. Okay, we are his sheep and, and the sheep of his pasture. Let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Let's be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is what? He's good. His mercy is everlasting. And the truth endures to all generations. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I know that I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died on Passover. And he was buried on unleavened bread. And he rose again on first fruits. And he gave us Pentecost. And he fulfilled these feast days. I believe that Jesus is your son. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Keep me. Give me the wisdom of Solomon. Help me to understand your word. Give me the desire to read your word every day. And always have a heart of forgiveness. A heart of repentance. Thank you, God, for loving me enough. And letting me be your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the family. God bless you. Make sure you get your Bibles out and be ready for the next round because next week I'll be coming to you from uh, 16 until 20, probably 16 to 20 of the book of Exodus. What a wonderful time we've had. God has delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. He's setting up his ordinances. He's helping us to understand his feast days. 
and we've got to remember and keep them forever. Jesus said, remember my death until I come. Okay, so his death is Passover. We're going to celebrate it. We're celebrating it right now. We're waiting for um, um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. is actually tomorrow, Monday. Um, I know when this video comes out, it'll probably already be Monday. And so we're celebrating. It will be Nissan 18. Uh, today is Nissan 17. It will be Nissan 18, 2018. And to God, actually it's, it's 5778. Nissan 18 is 5778 on the Hebrew calendar. And I'm probably foreign to you if you don't know. But it, um, it also represents um, Mar uh, April the 2nd, uh, 2018, uh, represents God's uh, uh, first fruits. And then the next uh, feast day will be Pentecost. And that's in 50 days from Passover. And so to God be the glory. Amen. So I look forward to seeing you again. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe my video and um, click the bell for subscriptions. To God be the glory. Have a wonderful week. I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, once again, um, here, uh, spending time with me here on this this time uh, of, of being online with me. To God be the most high God be all the glory. God bless you and I'll see you next time.